in this video i'm going to add the title and then the stream the stream feature okay i think these two are enough for this video the scale the area i will add it in the next video and then probably some of these details but for this one let's add the title and the, the stream so let's go back to the autocad environment so from the autocad environment we need to add the stream so the stream is actually somewhere along point p to p2 to p3 so if i check my reiki diagram you can see that the stream is along point p2 to p3 and that is that is it here so you can see we always refer to our reiki diagram when we're preparing the plan so to do this i'm going to use a particular command called sketch so to enable the sketch command you just type in sketch and then press enter so when you press enter on the sketch command you will see that the sketch is now enabled and then it's asking you to specify the sketch or type in increment or tolerance so these are the settings i think the default increment and the tolerance are good for us so to sketch the stream i will just click and then drag to sketch the screen so also click and then drag so this is just a rough sketch of how the screen how the stream will look like so if i'm done i press enter to terminate the drawing then the next thing i need to fill in the interior to indicate that this is actually a stream so I'll fill in with a pattern that will show that this is there is something actually inside so the command used for that is called hatch so hatch type in hatch and then press enter so with that you can now specify pick the internal point of where you want to hatch undo Control Z. Let me remove this borderline. I think that is the problem for the hatching. It is seeing it as the interior of what we wanted to hatch. Yeah, I think you can see. So this is the hatching. But this pattern is not good for a string. So I need to use a pattern that will look like a river. I think uh, there is a pattern called I don't know the name of the pattern but when you flip through you should see the one that will match uh, that of a, a stream or a river I think uh, we can use this one that looks like a swamp a swamp or just play around with, with the patterns uh, this is another one called grass I think that one too is okay so play around with it and then choose the best one that fits your your need so when you are done you click ok then one thing i would like to do is to remove remove the closing tip we only needed it for the pattern for the hatching because the hatching will not work if the place is not close if it's not a closing shape then i think what i can do now is to highlight it highlight everything and then change the color we could have even used a different uh, uh what they call it we could have used a different layer for this stream but well, since the drawing is not a complicated one so we decided to just use a single layer for the entire drawing well later on i will show you how to change the layer in case if you're working on a very large drawing where you need to manage different layers differently separately so now with the stream selected i can go to the property panel and then change the color so maybe i'll change it to something like green or blue i think blue should be more appropriate for a stream so i can go back select all of this so you can see the implication of not using a a layer if i didn't even use a layer would have just gone to the layer to change the color
affect all the elements or all the features in the layer. So that's a, that's the advantage of using layers to separate your drawing object. So let me quickly do this and then we can move on with the next feature, with the next item on the survey plan. So that is how to go about it. The next item we need to do is uh, the title. So in this case, I would like to I would like to introduce you to the layer concept. We made a mistake of not putting the stream on a different layer, and then you can see the way it is giving us tough time to change the color of all the elements. So had it been we use layer, it's just a matter of changing the layer color, and then it will affect it will take effect on all the features. So let's not make the same mistake. But before then, I would like to return my rectangle. So I'll just type rectangle and then draw it back. Remember, we did it earlier on in the previous video. And then here, I have to remove it because I needed to hash this stream. So now, to type in the title, let me use a layer. Introduce it to a layer concept so that you understand what is being done. So if I go to this layer panel, layer properties tab, I can simply type layer, layers, layer, and then press enter. It will open up the layer property. So from the layer property, I need to create a layer for the title. So by clicking on this new button, I will not have a new layer. I can call it title. So the layer is going to contain our title. And then I can make it active, status active, by double clicking on it. And then you see that the mark icon has changed from the default layer to the title layer we just created. And then you can also do that from this drop down here. So this, this is the default layer. And then this is the new title layer we just created. So whichever one is active here, that will be your active layer. So as, as you can see, this is the zero layer, that's the default layer. So all these features have been uh, under this layer, the zero layer, which is the default layer. So if I off the bulb, if I turn it off, all the features will disappear. And then if I go back and turn it on, all the features will now disappear. So had it been I created a stream layer and then add the stream under that layer, it would be easier for us to manage. If it was on one layer, we will just change the layer, the color of that layer, and then everything under the layer, under the layer will have the same color. So that is the advantage. So as you can see, I'm still changing the color of the stream. We still have some parts that are not in blue. So later on, I will do that. But now, let me use the title. So I will make sure that the title layer is title layer is active, and then type in the text for the title. So to type in the text for the title, I will type in M text. That's multi-line text. Then click to form a reasonable space. Then I will now type in the text. I just need to centralize it. And then as you can see, this is the text, but it is too small. So I'll select it and then increase the text height. Maybe three. Three is too large. One. I think one is okay. One is okay. But let me take it to 1.5 at least. Maybe 1.8. No, 1.8 is too much. 1.5. 1.5. One point five is too large. One point two. Let me just leave it at one. Okay. One is 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 moderately okay for our work. Then I can terminate the command. Let me zoom to extent. Sorry, zoom to extent. And then I will see the entire thing. So remember that. We will need some space below, down below here to for our scale and other details as seen here. 
So these very details. So what I will do now is to create a little space for them by moving the title up. So what I will do is I will select the title and the box. Then move everything up. So if I want everything to be moved perfectly horizontally, I will on this orthogonal mode. Then click here and then move up a little. Yeah. So I think uh, this space will be enough for, for us to have uh, this. So let me edit the title a little by selecting the client's name and bolding it. I can even increase the text for the client name. Maybe instead of one, I will leave it on 1.5. Mm. So, so this is just a, a simple title. And then the the standard may not be what is obtainable in your area. So just ask your survey or general or whatever, whoever is in charge of this kind of uh, information for the standard title. So here I'm moving my, I'm rearranging the title to fit in a little bit better. So you can see that the borderline is crossing. It's crossing the text. So what I can do is to, I can either explode the rectangle and then shift shift it a little, or I can delete it and redraw another one. So maybe I'll, I, will, I will just delete it, and then I will make sure that I'm using the right uh, layer. Or let me actually create another layer for the border. So click on the layer properties and then and then just type in borderline borderline then I can close it then I can come here and then make sure that the borderline is the active layer then I can now draw my rectangle rectangle something like this and then it should be somewhere here. I think uh, this position is okay. Then I will zoom to extend. Then save my drawing. So the borderline is on a different layer. The title is on a different layer. So this helps us to manage them effectively. For example, if I if I don't want to see these drawings, the drawing is on default layer, so I can off the default layer and then. All of them they will hide. If I own it back, if I don't want to see the title, I can just off the title layer, and then you can see that the title is gone. It's not deleted, but it is hidden. So if you are working on a very large drawing, a complex drawing, it is actually a nice idea to make sure that all your features are on different layer. It makes it easier to manage the drawing. You can even off the current layer. But you receive this kind of warning. So make sure that this is just a warning to let, let you know that the current layer is off. And then by the time you draw an object with the current layer off, you will see it. You have to on it back. So that is the concept of uh, layering. And then it's a good practice to actually have different part of the drawing on different layer. So this is, I think uh, that is it for this uh, drawing, for this uh, video. In the next one, we'll continue with the other features. See you then.